Good morning, beloveds. You ever wonder if I look in the mirror before I do these things? The answer is generally no. <laughs> um, oh. Okay, so um, we just got back from the park. It was a hot, sweaty, sticky day in the park, and we got there at 7.20. Um, if you can see my shirt, it's completely soaked all the way down. Um, and my husband doesn't sweat. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, and really, honestly, I'm glad that I used my Fitbit to record those runs because I'm telling you that that last mile was awful. Um, but when I looked at my pace according to my fit, the, the app on my phone, it wasn't bad. So I'm judging myself way more harshly than I deserve for, um, the run. Um, last week it was definitely faster, but this week it was good. It was consistent and faster than I have, have been. So that's good. Uh, and exciting. I may have gotten a picture of a blue jay. Uh, the blue jays in the park will, st will steal this, the, uh, the, the almonds from the squirrels. Like, straight up, flash down out of the trees at him. And um, I, I saw one, and I got a couple of pictures of it, but not really good ones. And so I asked Tom to put an, a, a, throw a couple of almonds in the, on the paved uh, path, and then we waited. <laughs> and one of them took it. And so I'm hoping that the picture came out. I mean, they're birds, and it's a cell phone, so... It may not be any good. I also think I may have seen the red-headed woodpecker. Whether or not I got a picture of him or not, we'll see. Again, cell phone. But it is March 23rd. We are getting close to the end of the month of joy. So I look forward to seeing what June will be. Um, and our Bible quote is from... Psalm 61, 4. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. <sighs> Biblical language sometimes just <laughs> makes me want to... <sighs> you know, I'm sure that in 300 years, somebody's going to go back and read our language and go, What are they talking about? Why did they use that word? But, you know, I mean, I'm an anthropologist. I get it. Language changes. But <laughs> sometimes I'm just like, really? Um, there's a Bible out there and I think they call it the word. And what they've done is they've translated it into modern language, like modern language. Um, and I keep saying that I'm going to get a copy of it. and I just keep not doing it. <sighs> well, considering I can't find any of my Bibles right now, maybe now is the time. All right, that's one of my goals today is to find one or all of, well, I know where one of them is. That's not true. I do know where one of my Bibles is. It's just my least favorite. So, um, yes, I have a favorite Bible. Um, so I'll find it. That's my goal. This Over the next three days, I'm going to find two or three of my Bibles. All right. Realizing that the spirit within me is God the living spirit almighty and being fully conscious of this divine presence as the sustaining principle of my life. I open my thought to its influx. I open my consciousness to its outpouring. I let that mind be in me. That was also in Christ. That is the mind of truth, the mind of God carrying with it all the powers of of the infinite. I do decree and declare that every experience that I have partakes of the nature of harmony and peace. I know and understand that good alone is real. I know that silently I am drawing into my experience today and every day that ever increasing measure of truth and beauty of goodness, of joy, of harmony, Everything that I do, say, and think 
is quickened into right action, into productive action, into increased action. All there is is mine now. All there ever was or ever can be is mine now. Of this divine bounty I partake. This same good I realize belongs to ever to everyone else. I do not desire a good for myself that is greater than the good I desire for all people. Neither do I deny myself the good I affirm for all others. Since all are some part of the divine, good belongs alike to all. I proclaim this good to be manifest among all people. All right. We're back to academics. <laughs> um, he is a teacher. Okay, so he starts off by saying, realizing that the spirit within me is God and, the, and, and, and naming it the living spirit almighty and being fully conscious of this divine presence as the sustaining principle of my life. I open my thoughts to its influx. Good morning, Susan. Uh, okay. So first off, I mean, he's, he's, he set it up like a treatment. Um, first off, there is one, the spirit within me is God, name it and claim it, the living almighty. And then he says, I am fully conscious of this divine presence and I'm fully conscious of this divine presence as the sustaining principle in my, of my life. Um, so because I am fully conscious of this, I open my thought, my thoughts to its influx. Uh, I open my consciousness to its outpouring. So it is a conscious act on our part. He was talking about faith yesterday. And so this is an act of faith where we recognize that the spirit within me is God. That spirit is the sustaining principle. And so I am consciously, not unconsciously, not subconsciously, I'm consciously opening to the influx and the outpouring through me of that principle. That is the mind of truth, the mind of God, carrying with it all the power of the infinite. So everything that God is flows through you. No question. No question. That is faith. Um, I do decree and declare that every experience that I have partakes of the nature of peace and harmony. So basically I'm stating this, this, okay. So I am, I, there is one God, I'm part of that God and everything that God is flows through me. So I have the possibility of everything that God can do. I have that possibility. The question is, am I willing to accept it? happening through me. And that is the, <laughs> what, what was the name of the, the, the million dollar question or with inflation, the $10 million question. Uh, okay. So I, I, I know and understand that good alone is real. That's hard. I admit it. Uh, when we look around and we see and we go, but, and so then we have to just refocus. Good alone is real. All of this is, is ephemeral, it's temporary, the reality, the big R, not the little R, what we are dealing with, um, good alone is real. So good will prevail. Um, I know that silently I am drawing into my experience today and every day, an ever increasing measure of truth, beauty, truth and beauty of goodness, of joy, of harmony. So he then proceeds to claim truth, beauty, goodness, joy, harmony. Everything I do say and think is quickened into right action, into productive action, into increased action. So if I am drawing into my experience, all of these good, all of this good, then it can't help but be right, productive, quickened action, increased action. It's, it's a natural progression of, um, all there is, is mine now. 
all there ever was or ever can be is mine now. Of this divine bar bounty I partake. If God wants you to be happy, then God is going to give you absolutely everything that you are willing to accept. And I think that's where we get, that's where we get lost. Um, cause that, if, if, if God wants me to be happy and God is, is going to give me all of this, then why it's, well, you know, I'm sorry, God is an Amazon, <laughs> you know, it doesn't just show up on your doorstep. You have to be willing to accept it. And sometimes that means getting out and doing the hard work. Um, so your good can absolutely come to you. But you also have to be willing to accept it. And that, I think, is where we as people, as humans, having the, as spirits having human experiences, where we get caught up. Um, it's like, well, I should be having all of this good. Why am I not having all of this good? Well, there's an acceptance within you that we need to turn up a little bit, I guess. I mean, find that little dial and just inch it up inch it all the way up to 11 <laughs> you can have it all but the cool thing is is he ends it by saying yeah oh yeah no no it's all mine but guess what and this is one of the things that i love about this teaching it's all mine but it's all yours too if i want it for me i can't not want it for me i, I can't i can't want it for me and not want it for you because in the end we're all one which means you are a part of me. So if I want good for me, then I want good for you. And that is one of the things that I absolutely love about this teach teaching. It's never exclusionary. There is no reason why you can't have it too. Because I want it for you. Because I recognize that you are my brother, you are my sister, you are me. On that level that is so hard for us to grasp sometimes. So, the same good that I realize, this, this same good, I realize belongs to everyone else. And that makes me so happy to know that the good that I can have for myself, everybody else can have too. Every now and again I have a moment. I'm human. But most of the time, that truly does make me happy. I love to see people happy. I love to see people succeed. I love to see people happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise, you know, it's, it, that's just, it, that's a joy. And that is what this teaching is about. It's like, no, you can have good and everybody else can too. There's enough to go around. Um, I do not desire a good for, for myself that is greater than the good I desire for all people. Neither do I deny myself the good I affirm for all others. Now that right there, right there. Neither do I deny myself the good I affirm for all others. Okay? So if you are affirming good for somebody else, you are affirming that same good for yourself. Um, it's kind of like, I'm going to use two examples. One, when you're on the airplane and they are doing the safety demonstration about putting the oxygen mask, they say put your oxygen mask on first before you help another. Okay, and then let's go back and talk about moms. Um, how moms have this tendency to eat last. And yet, if moms do their self-care first, then they have more energy to take care of their family. So, neither do I deny myself the good I affirm for all others. Maybe we should eat, let mom eat first. Just my opinion. I'm not a mom. <laughs> so, since all others are some part of the divine, good belongs alike to all. I proclaim this good to be manifest among all people. All right. So, today, he told us how it is what we can expect and the fact that we can expect it for everybody and don't deny it for ourselves um one of the things when you go through practitioner training they tell you that treating for another is the most selfish thing that you can do 
because the secret to uh, treatment is that um, you are treating yourself for that other person. You are holding that space for that other person for whatever good they are desiring in their life. Well, you're going to get that backflow. It's like, whatever you ask me to know for you, I get to know for you, but I also get to know it for myself. So it's amazing. It's one of the reasons why we love to do it. So I love to hold space for you. I love to know good for you. Because that lets it into my life too. All right. So tomorrow is Sunday. <laughs> and the live stream will be at 11. Um... I think we have uh, Melody and Kenzie again, but I believe I think it's the following Sunday we get to have a, we get to have Mary with the with her harp. So it will be amazing. Um, well, this Sunday will be amazing, and next Sunday will be amazing. No questions asked. So we're really looking forward to uh, having Mary on the stage with us. Uh, so I am going to again uh, encourage you. Do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself today. Um, if you're here in Houston, uh, the weather is going to be, I don't know. Uh, they've moved the most of the rain chances to tomorrow, but it's still, the clouds look like they're going to be amazing today, but it is hot and sticky out there today. Um, so make sure that you do something wonderful for yourself. Get some fresh air. Get some movement in. Dance around in your living room. Uh, and I will be in class in about 30 minutes. So I better get off this and go get something to eat. All right, beloveds. Uh, Reverend David will be on sometime later with you today. Thank you for letting me be late on Saturday so that we can go play with the squirrels in the park. It really is a whole lot of fun. Have a fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'll be back with you at 9. Love ya.